Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome to the third video in the Level 3 Circular Motion series. Uh, we're going to extend what we did in the second video, which was the force diagrams on banked corners, and we're going to do a sample calculation of a banked corner. So say you're given some problem where they give you the mass of the bus, they give you the angle the road's at, um, and the radius of the turn. And from that they ask you to find the normal force, or centripetal force, or finally the velocity. And I'm going to show you how to calculate each of those things there. So we had from last time our force diagram, um, which had a downwards force of gravity, uh, our normal force, which is always perpendicular to the road surface, and our total force was horizontal, which made us this triangle here. We've been told the angle of the road is 40 degrees, and I've put the angle of this, um, of my triangle in here, is 40 degrees. So the first question is, how did I know that that's where the angle goes? This is the first um, skill that you need to be able to do. So they've told us the angle of the road is 40 degrees, so I've, I've attempted to draw the road here, going up where the bus is, um, at 40 degrees. And if I move that up to the side there, and then draw on my forces, my gravity force downwards and my normal force perpendicular to the angle of the road, then I have a little baby triangle made up between the two yellow sides and the downwards force of gravity. One of the sides is 40 degrees, you can see where the 90 degrees is in there. And because the angles of a triangle add up to 180, that means the missing angle is 50 degrees. If I extend my normal force out, just extend it right out there, then the angle between um, my yellow line, my surface of my road, and that dash line is 90. That looks like it's a 90 there. And so I've got 50 on one side, and so the other side of that must be 40. Then if I extend my gravity upwards, then the rule for opposite angles are the same. So that's also 40 degrees. And that's part of my triangle that I've drawn. Here's the, the vertical, you can see it up on the on the on the right hand side of the bus. And my normal force and, and the one down there is 40 degrees. That's how I find it mathematically. However, when I'm in an exam, that's a lot for me to pull out. So here's my trick. I pretend, and I do this in the corner of my exam paper, that I don't have a, um, a road side with an angle of 40 degrees, I pretend that the ramp, the angle of the ramp is very, very small, like 5 degrees. And so what I say is, um, when I've got my vector addition diagram, which is my really, really small angle? So as an example, let's pretend the road is 5 degrees, like this. So you can see that very small angle in there. The other angles are much bigger. Draw my forces on there and draw a little... Um, vector addition diagram and then I say which is I know one of these angles is five degrees which of the angles there is five degrees and it should be really really obvious which is the really small angle and it's that one down the bottom so then I just go to my actual vector addition diagram with the 40 degrees on and I know it's in the same place so that's my little hint to you or my little trick that I'd use okay we've got the angle so let's find some things normal force first right so always in these situations, um, the information you've got to start with is to find gravity first. And gravity is just force uh, mass times um, gravity. Find the force of gravity. So this was 1,000 times uh, 9.8 newtons per kg. Gives you 9,800 newtons. I'll draw that on my triangle as well. So I know um, where that information goes. And then to find the normal force, I'm going to use trig, so Kartoa. So I actually still do this, I'll draw on my triangle which is the adjacent, which is the opposite, and which is the hypotenuse. So I've drawn them on there, opposite the angle, adjacent the angle, and the hypotenuse. And then figure out what I've got, I want to find the normal force, so that's hypotenuse, and I've got the adjacent, so that's a cos. Write it out, and then I'm not going to go through all the steps, but you rearrange to solve, and I get a normal force there. So if you want to practice one, you'd pause the video to make sure you can follow it. Once I've got that information, 12,000 is the normal force, 12,000 newtons. I put that on the um, triangle as well. So now if I'm asked to find the total force, I could use Sokartoa again, or I could use Pythagoras because I have two sides of the triangle. And so I'm going to use Pythagoras just to mix it up. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember C is the hypotenuse, which is my 12,000. So I've got um, B, I need to find A, and I've also got C. When you rearrange that, again, I'm going to do it rather quickly. You get a squared equals this, and then find the square root to find a. So now I have the total force, which is also called the centripetal force. And the last thing they might ask me to do is find the velocity. Uh, the relationship between velocity and this force diagram is that the total force, or centripetal force, remember I like calling it the total force, in a circle, 
is equal to mv squared over r, a formula you're given. I've now worked out my total force. I can see it up there, 8,232. I know my radius and my mass, and I can rearrange to find velocity. So you put your numbers in, um, and you rearrange to find velocity. Okay, I'm not going to do it because it's just a maths problem, really. So the key that I want you to take out of this, instead of just following my math, the key hints from this video, is um, draw your vector addition diagram. So not just the forces on the bus, but actually your vector addition diagram that looks like the triangle. Make sure you've got that right. If you need to, go back to the previous video to make sure you know how to do those. Practice labeling the angle in the right place. Remember I gave you a hint on how I do it with the small angle, um, or you could just do it mathematically like I showed you the first time. And always calculate the force of gravity first. That's your first bit of information, along with the angle in the triangle, means you can calculate everything else that's missing. All right, I'll see you in the next video.